Egalitarians have a problem, and that problem is the basic impossibility of their position. You have identifiable races, races which can be identified by forensic anthropologists very easily. Any genetic origin and cluster analysis almost completely corresponds with self-identified race. The genetic distance between identifiable races is similar to that of dog breeds and wolf breeds, and from the limited information available, is in the same ballpark as the distance between humans and Neanderthals and Homo erectus. These races also differ in gross brain morphology. And there was even a study with an unfortunately small sample size that showed a difference in brain composition. Not only difference in total size, that's old news, but differences in brain composition. For example, Africans have a much larger orbital frontal cortex. And Africans use uh, a higher percentage of white matter, whereas Europeans have a higher percentage of gray matter. Right? So not only are there differences in total size, but from what limited uh, stuff has been done on this, we're seeing differences in you know, qualitative composition of the brain. And I suspect if you did more of this, you know, we, we could see more of this. The, the technology is there. The public interest is definitely there. Whenever there's a study on race, there's lots of public interest on it. But it just seems that researchers don't want to do this. And we can speculate as to why that is. Now, there are several tactics egalitarians use to obfuscate what should be a simple evolutionary debate. The first tactic is to deny basic reasoning and basic critical thinking. And they do this by calling it common knowledge. You're just making an argument from common knowledge instead of using peer-reviewed science. This is a bit dishonest uh, for two reasons. One, um, everyone's using peer-reviewed science. All of this is peer-reviewed. All these studies that I cite are all peer-reviewed. Okay, that's point one. Point two, peer review is not all it's cracked up to be. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it at that. But it is excruciatingly basic. Man leaves Africa, evolves in different places evolves in brain. Here are the gross morphology differences. The notion that the races on average have identical brain function is a joke position. It is a political position. It is an unreal position. It is a position that cannot be stated in a forthright and clear manner without looking ridiculous. That's why egalitarians are so cryptic about what they actually believe and instead focus on critique instead of making out their case for equality. So by labeling basic reasoning common knowledge, they can dismiss basic reasoning and the fundamental impossibility of their position and go on to exotic minutiae. The next tactic is to demand specific genes that explain behavioral di differences. This is raising the bar. One cannot infer the heritability, heritability of, you know, for example, IQ gaps through subtest heritability, fade out, regression to the mean, or the intermediate results of race mixing, for example, East Asian European hybrids not only have overall intermediate IQ scores, but they are intermediate within each subtest. So you can't do any of this. You can't do any of this to infer innateness. No, you must find specific genes. Okay? This is a denial of inference. Saying th this is taking inference off the table. The irony of this is that even when you are comparing people with certain copies of genes, you're still inferring. You're comparing people with X gene versus people with Y gene instead of people of X race versus people of Y race. You're still going to have to either control for environment or you're going to have to somehow tease out uh, the heritable portion of behavior, you're going to have to do something to infer heritability even when you're looking at specific genes, okay? Going down to the gene-specific level, it doesn't exempt you from having to deal with all the problems of induction. So demanding genes is just a talking point, and it's something that came about on YouTube. It is a YouTube-specific tactic. Gene demanding is YouTube-specific. You don't see this anywhere else. And the reason it came about on YouTube is because the Skeptical Heretic and Evogen videos were influenced by Sophia Rune. And so they both propagated this fallacy that you have to identify specific genes. If this standard was used in all of biology, we wouldn't have biology. Right? Biology would not be able to develop to where it is today. Applying this standard to all of biology would be crippling. It would be crippling even today because we don't even because we don't know specifically the genes that make a dolphin smarter than a Rottweiler. And in fact, I had a discussion with Sophia Rune on this matter, and I said, "Could we 
infer that a dolphin is smarter than a Rottweiler without knowledge of the specific genes that cause it? And she said, no, we must suspend judgment until we find these specific genes. The third tactic is to invoke the mystery of racism, to say these people are racists, and then to connect any discussion about race or race differences to this mystery of racism. The success of this tactic can be seen in how the schlock of God, who is a hereditarian now, or, or race realist or whatever you want to call it, thinks he's not because he doesn't believe in racial superiority. Okay, see that? Superiority. Superiority is a term injected by the egalitarians. Supremacism is a word injected by the egalitarians, not by the hereditarians. Words like bigotry and prejudice are used by hereditarians, not egal uh, by, are used by egalitarians, not hereditarians, all right? They're all invocations of the mystery of racism. The fourth tactic is to draw parallels to creationism. And this is a very curious thing to do since uh, racial egalitarianism, it goes against Darwin's views on race, Charles Darwin's views on race, okay? And they are denying evolutionary differences between humans. They are denying evolution to a certain extent. They're de denying evolution in the brain in terms of differences between races, right? It's a very specific denial of evolution. Uh, in fact, let me quote some eminent egalitarian anthropologists on this. There's been no biological change in humans in 40,000 or 50,000 years. Everything we call culture and civilization, we've built with the same body and brain. Stephen Jay Gould. Something must have happened to weaken the selective pressure drastically. We cannot escape the conclusion that man's evolution towards madness suddenly came to a halt. Ernst Mayer. The egalitarian position is saying that evolution stopped. It is a denial of evolution. New science is coming out that's saying, no, this is false. Evolution continued. This idea of slow evolution should have been just kind of written off entirely once we discovered the difference in lactose tolerance rates, but I digress. The attempt to link those who believe who believe the evolution continued, you know, differently in different places, producing populations that vary by region of ancestral development, the attempt to link this with creationism, this is totally backwards. Moreover, people who are prone to just regurgitate what they are told are more likely to be in the egalitarian camp since that is the status quo. That's what I was told as I was a kid. The school curriculums are all egalitarian. The mindless bigots, the, the people who just repeat whatever they're told, are going to repeat the dominant positions of society, not some fringe positions. Now, that doesn't necessarily make the people who have uh, their own ideas or fringe positions necessarily correct, but to call them bigots, well, that's just inane. Furthermore, egalitarians prejudge all races to be the same in the brain on aggregate. Right? This is a prejudgment. The egalitarian prejudice was ingrained in childhood, and later it is now being rationalized as an adult, and you are seeing that rationalization process right before your eyes. We all know that this is what is going on. We all know that there was not some logical proof that you came to to become a racial egalitarian. We know what it was. I came to it the same way. You're not fooling anyone by saying, oh, I came to this through logic and science. Like, the fifth tactic is the use of uh, two major fallacies, Lewontin's fallacy and the qu continuum fallacy. With Lewontin's fallacy, they argue that the greater variation within than between races is evidence that the races don't matter. When it is pointed out that dog breeds also have more variation within than between uh, dog breeds, the egalitarian will then move the goalposts and argue that uh, domestic dog breeds don't count because domesticated dogs were selectively bred and thus will show greater phenotypical diversity for a given amount of genotypic uh, variation. But of course we can point to other animals which have less total genetic diversity than humans but are said to have several subspecies, breeds, types, races, or whatever. All right, and all this shows um, the, that nowhere else is Lewontin's fallacy used. No, nowhere else in biology is Lewontin's fallacy taken seriously. That, that's why it's called a fallacy. Um, the continuum fallacy is simply pointing out that uh, race can be a, on a continuum. While there are some semi-discrete breaks here and there, you can, for example, draw a continuum from China to Western Europe and create a link-by-link -link comparison, and each link, you know, going from, uh, you know, uh, central China to Manchuria to Mongolia to Stanland to the Kazakh to, you know, uh, Kurgan up to, up to Russia, Belarusia, Poland, Germany, Denmark, and then up to Sweden. Right? 
you can make a link by link comparison and find that they're not very different from the prior one. And this is then used to say that therefore a Swede and a Japanese person, the two people at the extreme ends of, of the chain, are the same. Hopefully I don't even have to explain. The sixth tactic is to conflate prescriptions and descriptions, to implicitly make the recognition of human evolution and clustering packaged with racial separatist or even quote-unquote supremacist views. Right? So that if you adopt the descriptive views on race, you also have to adopt um, the, some prescriptive views that are supposedly connected to these descriptive views on race. One last point, and this isn't a tactic of any kind, but what you will find is people coming to racial hereditarian conclusions basically saying that that's what they are, but then denying that they are in fact racial hereditarians because the label has been successfully associated with the mystery of racism. 